Hi guys. So apparently this is the last talk for today. So I hope that you guys are still have some energy left. So we're not going to go very complex stuff. We're not going to dive into protocols tonight. I just you know, wanted to share some tips about how you guys can, if you're willing to build a business, or if you are already building one, how you can use some tools and good practices to help your team grow without making the same mistakes as we did. Um, I realized I did not introduce myself properly, so I'm Thibaut, the CEO of Maltis. So we're building a crypto management, um, crypto treasury management platform for companies operating in the space. Um, we are helping hundreds of companies today manage their crypto better. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking on us, about us today. I really want to focus on some quick tips um, to help you guys. So, uh, the good news is uh, we are more and more builders in the space. Um, you know, just sharing some quick, quick stats I find interesting because we have a lot of developers joining the ecosystem, plus 250% growth. So uh, we're not here to talk about figures, right? But it's really exciting to see that a lot of people are actually joining the space to build stuff. They can even now, obviously, incorporate the DAOs. Um, actually, using the word incorporating for DAO sounds a little bit paradoxical. But still, they can do that in Wyoming. So, the good news is for us, uh, we have builders in the space building amazing stuff. Um, we think that as a community, we have an amazing opportunity to build an open financial system to help entrepreneurs all around the world strive. Thing is, uh, as builders today, it's still super hard, super hard to operate. And it is very hard to scale your business as soon as you find some traction. Um, the uh, you know, what we call ops, uh, so operations today, we, we're just going to say that those are all the very tedious tasks that you guys do on a daily basis, whether it's running a payroll, whether it's keeping track of expenses, whether it's interacting with your lawyers or accountants. Those are ops. It's basically making sure that your company still moves forward. And we believe that in the crypto space, you know, basic administrative tasks today take so much time that they are the killers, the slow killers of most companies in the space. So um, one of the main reasons today is because contrary to the traditional, um, you know, um, let's call it traditional entrepreneurship, if you will, um, there's no tools. Um, you cannot rely on new banks. Uh, you cannot rely on fintechs, on invoicing stuff, on accounting tools like Xero or QuickBook to manage your crypto treasury. We talked to over 200 entrepreneurs, and sometimes their setup is super scary. You have this feeling that everything will break. Um, we, most of those founders, I've got a couple examples here. Um, we have some founders who literally do not make any transactions, do not run payroll after 3 p.m. because they're scared to make those transactions without being um, focused enough. Uh, we have, you know, um, uh, founders being kicked out of the banks multiple times, so they have to, uh, you know, rely on four bank accounts to make sure the company can still go. We have founders, um, you know, who spend weeks, um, weekends, uh, potentially weeks too, but weekends um, working on reconciliating transactions at the end of the quarter because their accountants do not understand shit about everybody in the team, uh, about the transaction that everybody in the team did. Um, even uh, all those very um, tedious tasks takes a lot of time, for sure, but they create a lot of anxiety. It is super stressful to build a crypto business today. Um, I, I can testify. I mean, I'm, I'm spending way too much time building this, and I'm sure that I saw some smiles here. I'm sure that a lot of you guys have experimented this. It is freaking hard, you know? We're doing things. It's like, the, the, it's like we're building um, laser guns, uh, but we're just throwing them instead of using them properly. Um, and one of the main consequences in the, in the space is that we do not dog food. How can the world adopt cryptocurrencies if we don't use them to run a payroll, if we don't use them to pay our contributors? Um, so basic stuff with crypto is too damn hard for us to dog food today. <coughs> the, um, so the, the, the ambition of this, of this presentation is, to, is really to share some tips, some good practices. Uh, this is the first time I'm presenting uh, this kind of stuff. Last year, I did a talk on the future of banking. Um, we, we wanted to do something a little bit more directly helpful to the community. And this thing could, uh, first, it relies on your feedback. So feel free to ask questions at the end. Uh, come to me, uh, share some uh, recommendations, uh, ideas to make it better. 
uh, we might open source it um, on a blog, um, on a Google Doc, whatever, just to make it more usable and spread it through the community, again, to share good practices and help company scale. Uh, we've identified three main hurdles. Of course, there are many others, but we can have three main categories here. Managing payment and treasury, tracking wallets and transactions, and um, toggling from crypto to fiat, which we can even uh, summarize in just banking relations, right? Um, one thing I want to remember, uh, it's all about the mindset here. Um, as a crypto builder, I hate ops. And that's something I was, you know, pushing away constantly. I just wanted to focus on building my thing, on smart contracts and everything else. And these things catch up. And you wake up, six months later, it's a nightmare. You have too much to do uh, in terms of reconciliation, in terms of understanding how your company is using crypto, in terms of even understanding how much fees you spent. Um, so everything starts with a mindset. You have to believe that if you want to scale your crypto, you have to start from day one with good practices and stick to them. Um, so first problem, um, storing crypto is risky. So I'm going to go super quick here. But my point is everything starts with the right wallet. You need a secure place to store your crypto. Uh, you have multiple options, but one of the most common pitfalls today is to use an individual wallet. Most wallets today are used, um, are, are designed for individuals, whether it's a MetaMask, whether it's a Coinbase account. Um, there are no wallets really designed at their core for business. Um, one of the issues with those individual wallets is that you have to deal with, with, uh, with social risk. Social risk is basically relying on your teammates, on your co-founders to um, manage funds just like you do. Uh, you have to trust them blindly that they will not run away with your funds because you're sharing a single key. So that's an issue. Second issue, uh, second risk, sorry, is the counterparty risk. Say you are working with an exchange, for example, um, storing your funds there. Well, I mean, we all know the, the, the mantra here, not your keys, not your money. Um, the last thing is, uh, it's still, crypto, Cryptolandia is still a jungle. So when transaction, when funds are out, funds are out. You are fucked. You cannot get your funds backed. So you have to find the right storage solution before anything happens with your funds. Um, so obviously, and you probably guessed because our name is Multis, but we are big fans of multi-signature wallets. Um, so very simply put, a multi-signature wallet is a smart contract wallet where ownership of funds is shared. Several team members will use their own private keys to unlock funds. Right, it's a team wallet. Um, we think that those smart contract wallets are the best compromise between security and usability for several reasons. Uh, the first, they're self-custodial, so you don't rely on an exchange. Um, they're secure against social risk that I described earlier. Um, they are, because you rely on several private keys, they're hard to compromise. Um, so you, you're kind of mitigating a bit the, 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 the hacking risk, technical risk. They're software based, which means you don't have to carry around your ledger wallet in order to use your funds to run your company. You can transact anywhere, anytime from a browser. And they're smart contract based, which means um, we can actually connect to DeFi, for example, and provide additional tools that I'll describe later to scale your operations. Um, well, the best choice today is Gnosis Safe. It's a fantastic tool, it's resilient, it's robust, it's storing billions, the team there is fantastic. Um, it's probably the best multi-signature infrastructure there is. It's built on Ethereum. Uh, for now, they're expanding to other chains. Um, Multis is a solution that is built on top of Gnosis Safe. So we're relying on their best-in-class architecture and infrastructure, and we're just providing a more business-friendly, convenient interface so that team do not necessarily um, require technical experience before using them. Um, second problem, payments are time consuming. Um, we, a couple of comments here, but essentially you know, the main problem is that you need sometimes from the moment where you receive an invoice to the moment you pull the trigger and make the payments and actually report it to your spreadsheet, you need 40 minutes. It's fine for one payment. Say you start hiring people and running a payroll, make it 10 payments. So quickly, you end up needing a full-time employee to manage your transaction. Good for you. It means you have funds and you can hire people. But that's maybe not the best use of her or his time. Um, the second thing is, because it's so tedious, because there are so many frictions when making a payment, 
um, you know, you're gonna check the address uh, twice, thrice. Um, you're gonna uh, you're gonna double check the amount as well. You're gonna you know move from one invoice to the to the application. Potentially use several wallets uh, at the same time. Well, it's tedious and prone to to error. So again, it's gonna create a lot of anxiety when you're making your transaction, which also explains why people are spending so much time making them. Um, it's a source of stress. Um, and again, I'm, I'm using this, this, which really this, this last sentence really struck me. Um, this guy works like hell, but he stopped making payments at 3 p.m. because he's scared shitless of making those transactions. Um, so pro tip here, delegate. Even if you have three people in the team, just use a multi-signature wallet and set up an approval workflow so that other people than you can actually make payments in total safety and security. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy when you're using a multi-signature wallet. You start by inviting people, so you can use either uh, their emails or uh, you can use their public key, public address if they have a wallet. Uh, you set a transaction limit, whether it's monthly or daily. You create an approval workflow, which means each time payments are bigger than this threshold, well, you have to approve the transaction. Um, and most importantly, if you start delegating those payments, you need to make sure that you share a contact book with your teammates so that people can use the same address. Say you're running a payroll, well, you wanna find a, a safe place where you're gonna save contacts, addresses of the employees. Same with partners, counterparties, et cetera. Uh, if you need, if you start making high volume payments, my recommendations are to use an invoicing tool like Request, to use a mass payment tool like Multisync. So Request basically is a, is a convenient way for you to ask to be paid, um, or the other way around, uh, and to pay without going through this constant double checking process. Um, Multisync, mass payment, and you're sending up to 1,000 transactions at the same time. So if you're, in, if you're bootstrapping a community, starting to incentivize users, this is a very convenient tool. Superfluid, um, this, is, um, this is a smart contract where you're gonna basically store funds, lock funds, and you're gonna enable the app to continuously send money to the beneficiaries. So for example, you can run a payroll and say, hey, I want my employees to earn, say, five euros a minute. And you can do that on a continuous basis. Um, they have some recurring options too. So if you start running subscription-based models, that could be helpful too. Um, problem number three, too many wallets. Um, usually in a traditional space, when you start your company, you have maybe one bank account and uh, maybe one FinTech account if you start transacting abroad. TransferWise, for example. Um, well, the average crypto company has between five and 20 wallets. Uh, at Maltese, we, because we are building our own smart contracts, we even have 23 wallets, last time I checked. Um, the reason is there are so many different use cases and there is no way a wallet can enable all of them. So you're gonna use wallets, a MetaMask wallet to do some DevOps, to uh, you know, uh, use a ring um, You're gonna use another one, a party wallet for example, to uh, pull liquidity on Uniswap. Um, you can use another one for safety as an airdrop. You're gonna, you, you can have multiples of them because people wanna keep their privacy. So bottom line, you have too many wallets to handle and you have no visibility over your funds, um, which, which is a risk. Um, I've also seen a lot of founders use their personal wallets um, to store funds. So it's like you're using your personal bank account um, to store your company's funds. It's fine when you're bootstrapping your two people. As you grow, this is not a way to run your business. If you're using a multi-signature wallet and signing transaction with your own personal wallet, it makes things even, even more complicated. So my recommendation here is just to separate wallets by use case, starting with personal and professional wallets. Um, and yeah, just like I said at the beginning, stay consistent. Once you laid out processes, just stick to them, share them internally, write them on the slide and notion notes. Um, so one of the, the, the tips I, I, I'm struggling to implement actually uh, with my own company uh, is to prevent team members to just create wallets on the go. It's so easy to open a new wallet that your developers, for example, uh, or any people from the team will create them on the go. And you're gonna end up at some point with wallets with maybe $1 worth of crypto. Uh, you're gonna have like 50 of them. Thing is, because those are, you know, 
funds from the company, you have to report them. You have to make sure that nobody's using them. Um, divide wallet by use case and stick to them. That's what I said earlier. Um, avoid having multiple wallets per use case. Keep a directory of wallets with name. That could be a simple spreadsheet with labels and categories and a description of the wallets um, and use case and owners identified. And uh, last thing, uh, which is kind of related to the directory thing, but label, th label stuff, label stuff. It's super easy. Just have a column, you know, Excel spreadsheet, and keep doing it along the way. Um, I mean, honestly, this has saved us so much time in terms of reconciliation uh, at the end of the quarter. Um, as you can see here, we have several wallets. Um, we have, uh, I wish we had so much money. Um, we have addresses here, some the, the networks, the amounts, variation, um, and when you when you expand it, we we can actually add some categories. Uh, you can you can keep a, you can use a simple spreadsheet to do that. Problem number four: um, we have some bookkeeping issues with crypto, and I'm sure that most of you are aware of this. Uh, the the number of transactions in the space is maybe ten times transaction. I mean. Transaction per wallet, probably 10 times the transaction you do with your regular bank accounts. Um, everything is a transaction. If you're building smart contracts, you're going to spend gas. This is a transaction. If you are um, you know, pulling liquidity, this involves several transactions from the initial swap to I mean, build, using the pair and then you know, uh, pulling liquidity. Um, obviously, all those transactions um, are very different than fiat from fiat transaction, regular transaction that you report today. Um, one of the, the things that we, we recommend is to start tracking a transaction from day one, just like you do with wallets. So have a very simple spreadsheet. So we have a template that we can share. Um, we, you know, there is a, we'll, we'll provide the link at the end. So basically, you know, this helped us save a lot of time as well. So basic stuff, huh? we're not reinventing the wheel here. So amount, asset, category, notes. Category and notes are extremely important because they will help your accountant understand what you did with your transaction. Again, start from day one, because if you have to wait six months, you're gonna need a month to understand what you did with your funds, who, who made some transaction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, you have some tools to help you do that. So Zerion is a great tool for, mostly designed for individuals, but if you have a low volume of transaction, you can start with that. Uh, team is great, the product is great. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit too much designed for DeFi, but it's still a very, very useful tool. Um, if you are scaling the company, uh, you can use Maltis. So we have a tracking module where you can basically label stuff, add categories. Basically, a little bit like the same, like this, but on a software that you can export and plug into accounting softwares. If you are a trader, uh, if you are um, dealing with exchanges, for example, uh, Crypto is another good tool. Um, they are supporting way more networks than we do, um, or Zhiyun does. Uh, it's a great tool, too. Um, if any of you guys are willing to build your businesses and need intros to, the, to these tools, that's something I didn't mention, feel free to come to us, and we're happy to introduce you guys. Um, another tip, um, find a crypto-friendly accountant. Um, that's not an easy one. Um, we, we don't have any recommendations here. I just start by asking basic questions. Um, how familiar are you with crypto? Um, whether they have worked with crypto? Uh, do they understand DeFi and not Bitcoin? Because sometimes both of them uh, confuse. I mean, they confuse both of them. Um, make sure that those people are ready to work with you without overcharging you. Because very often, they're going to say, it's OK, we, we understand. And then at the end of the month, uh, they're going to charge you like, Price the regular amount, so make sure of that. We do have a really good accountant we can recommend. It's Jad Fiducial. Um, it's a French company, Jad Fiducial. Yeah, sounds much better actually. Uh, but they are they, they have a, they have some 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 outlets over the world, including in the U.S. Um, we do not take commission fees uh, when you guys work with them. Uh, they are amazing. They helped us a lot, and now they get crypto. Um, you can also use tools, especially for tax. Token tax, accounting.com, coin tracker, a great tool. Wallet you is a little bit more designed for individuals, but it, in case of low volumes, um, it can help too. Another problem, um, we're getting to the end. So when you are a crypto, it's very hard to open a bank account, and it's even harder to keep it. Um, we, I mean, look at us, we're still punks. 
Uh, people still think that we're not doing legit stuff. Um, you know, whether we raise funds or hire a team or have contractors with legit contracts, well, we'll still deem different, um, which means most banks don't want to work with us, uh, especially since we're dealing with still great stuff when we're doing governance things. Uh, those guys do not understand what we do. Um, and we are at the mercy of the, of the mood swings. Um, we basically have this issue with, uh, with Revolut. So we open our bank account. By the way, we did not mention that we were a crypto company, so that's a, um, uh, a quick trick. Uh, just, 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 you, just, just say you're doing financial software. It's a shame that we have to, to do this in order to open a bank account. But, you know, um, at the end, you still need a bank account, unfortunately, today. Uh, we, got our, we got our bank account shut down by Revolut. Uh, we had $1 million uh, on it. So I was basically like one week away from uh, running um, out of funds to run my payroll. Um, so you want to have backup plans um, up to three, four accounts in case you are stuck with this kind of situation. Um, we do know of some crypto tolerant banks. Uh, they're pretty expensive today, but in the US, for example, uh, Mercury is pretty crypto friendly. Uh, I can make intro there. Uh, I can make intros there if, if, if you guys need help. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, super clunky, 80 style, but they still accept crypto businesses. Um, you're gonna need 40 minutes to make a transaction though, just like with crypto, but still, you'll have a bank account. In Europe, Bank Freak and Signa are pretty useful. Um, um, again, crypto friendly, very expensive, but those are good options if you if you are in the in the if you are in the, in the complicated situation here. Um, one of the things that we learn is that it's not because you're doing crypto stuff that you want to avoid your banker. Um, this is extremely, especially relevant to us as we're building online tools. And I've always hated talking to my banker because I feel that building a fintech or whatever means that finally I will be able to do stuff on my own without relying on him. The thing is, at least for now, when you're making transaction, say you're building your business and you're scaling, you're gonna have to convert crypto on and off from exchanges, for example. Uh, so you wanna, you wanna build a relationship with him so that he or her can understand that you're moving huge crypto volumes. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get your bank account flagged and you're gonna, be, you're gonna get your bank account shut down just like we did. Um, have back in plus, so that's what happened to us. Um, the, those are the main tips I wanna share. I mean, obviously I'm happy to share more. Um, we, the thing is, going corporate, when you start is a mindset, and then you need, for, you need tools as you scale up. Um, we are part of the companies that are trying to help, so we really think that we're building not only a wallet, but a financial operating system for companies dealing with crypto. So right now, those are crypto-native companies. Obviously, like all of us here, we believe that crypto is eating the world. So soon, most businesses will need crypto, and that's where we'll be able to help us. Um, we, um, you know, I had a demo, but really today, I think, um, I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, oh, actually, I have, I'm five minutes ahead, so I'll, I'm gonna maybe uh, share very quickly what we can do. Um, yeah. I know, I know that this is gonna, this is gonna be a failure. Like all demos, oh, like all demos. So essentially, what you wanna do here, as you can see, is a very convenient interface with the dashboards to keep visibility of your funds. Um, so that's the tracking part I wanted to mention. Um, you have, <laughs> demo effect, perfect. Settings, so that's where you can basically set up um, transaction thresholds. Um, daily limits, invite people, obviously, through emails so that they can join the wallet. Um, we, I'm actually going faster than the demo, so I was hoping that demo was uh, so smooth that you guys will be impressed and I will be trying to catch up constantly. Not yet the case. Um, we have, so those are, those are where you can add wallets, so I mentioned the difficulty of having several wallets as a team. So first, consolidate demo try to have as, li uh, as, as few as possible, and then for the remaining use cases you wanna you know, uh, use a wallet with, just aggregate them on a solution. Could be Zerion, could be Crypto, could be Multis, but that's the way to do it. Add some descriptions so that your accountant can understand them. Um, one of the, um, yeah, so that's a, that's a key thing here. Um, note that we, we actually cover support exchanges, so 
because we, are not, we, not, we, we do not enable you guys to buy crypto with our interface as, a, as an organization, uh, you can still use Coinbase and connect your wallet to Multis so that you can have an overview of your balances. Um, we basically have some, uh, some, additional, uh, some additional transaction. Um, so this is the dashboard again. Um, you know, I realized we just added the, this, this demo literally 15 minutes away uh, before, the, before, the, <laughs> before the talks I'm discovering as, just as you do. So this is a nice feature to, you know, you, you had an overview of the transaction, you can add labels, have details. So that's extremely important to share with your accountant again and to create some more accountability within your team. Um, Google Ads test, we're not running Google Ads yet. Um, we might at some point. Um, and the last thing is um, uh, the approval workflow. Um, I don't think we show it here. Um, so I really recommend you to come to me if you wanna have a look at the product. Uh, it will be actually much more efficient at demo. But long story short, we're building this tool to help companies scale operations. Obviously, we are a very early product. Um, we, right now, we enable you to track transactions. We enable you to export them as a CSV. Uh, we enable you to make payments without the anxiety and frictions that I described. Um, that's about all. And we have an ambitious roadmap. Uh, we want to enable you guys to make high volume payments. Um, we want to give more granularity to spending policies uh, so that you can empower members of the team to spend without requiring approvals from the owners of the wallet each time, from the founders. Uh, one of the big, big bricks um, that is moving well is the integration of fiat accounts. Right now you have to rely on the self custody your wallet on one hand, for example, and then an exchange. So we wanna be the first company in the world to enable you to own your own crypto, but still be able to conveniently convert it um, against fiat. I wish we could only build with crypto, but at least for the five next years, we're gonna have to pay taxes uh, in euros or dollars, so this thing will help. Um, the last thing we, we're gonna, the last um, um, thing we're gonna build is an accounting software integration, so that the transaction history that you guys saw um, could flow, uh, can flow seamlessly to an accounting software. Um, and voila, this is, uh, this is, this is it. Um, I am super happy to have shared those tips. Uh, we learned the hard way at Maltese, so I hope, I hope, really hope that this is gonna be useful. Super happy to share the presentation so that you guys can use it. Uh, I'd love actually to see you guys contribute to this work as you grow your businesses. Um, we really wanna have something that is convenient for businesses because we feel that the, the, the only solution for, the only way for crypto to get mainstream is to have crypto builders actually using it as part of the business. There is a square code here, so we have a community. So if you guys want to share tips, um, if you discover a new, you know, a new bank um, accepting crypto companies, well, do say it so on the Slack channel. Um, it will help a lot people in the space. Um, there's also Sam, uh, Samantha, who is doing onboardings. Uh, so we're still a closed beta uh, product. Um, we will be releasing our public version in the coming months, but in the meantime, coming weeks, sorry. But in the meantime, if you wanna get a sneak peek of the, of the, of the product, feel free to reach out to Samantha. Uh, she's awesome, she, she will help you a lot. This is it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gia. Is there anyone who has any questions? Yes. That was a great talk, thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any suggestions as to how you can pay salaries anonymously if you're paying people in crypto? So it's still a little bit of a gray area. Um, so basically, where, where are you incorporated or where do you plan on incorporating? In the UK. In but the we're, UK. We're, all our assets are stored in crypto. We don't even have a bank account. Well, the, the, the most convenient way to do it right now is to hire them as contractors because you're not, uh, in that case, they're not, you're not subject to employment laws. Sorry, I, I mean so that they can't see each other's salaries by looking at a block explorer. Huh. That's what I mean, sorry. So at the moment, we're just sending to an exchange and then withdrawing from an exchange. Yeah, but that doesn't seem like a very graceful solution. That's, that's one of the things we want to build as well. Yeah. Probably a little bit further down the road, but that's a privacy issue, right? Yeah. Um, the, you have to use a mixer for now. So yeah. an exchange or Tornado. Um, Tornado. Tornado Cash, for example. Um, we, we have plans to integrate with solutions such as Aztec or, or Hopper um, to enable those private transactions, but there's, there's nothing we, there's no solution, unfortunately, right now. 
unless you're using multiple wallets, but if somebody is really, really willing to find the source, they will find it and they're gonna see the salary and then you're gonna fall back into the problems I described earlier, which is where are my funds because I have too many wallets. So yeah, hopefully I will be able to provide an answer next year at the same talk. Uh, anyone else? Oh, yes. Thank you for all the tips. Uh, you mentioned uh, the crypto-friendly banks, but I've been told that today you can almost do everything with the fintech, like uh, Revolut. In your mind, do you think you can do everything, or you have problems? I mean, look at what happened to us. We're super legit. Uh, it's not even mentioned crypto on our, on our business, but we got shut down. Um, so you, you the, 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 the banking landscape is increasingly more open to crypto. Revolut, because you know, for example, uh, Revolut tells you that they are they are enabling crypto transaction for B two C, right? They're none. They're just giving you exposure, but they they're holding the cryptos. Um, Transferize, we got rejected. Um, Iban first, we got rejected. Um, we had to we managed to open an account with Conto in France because we know personally the the CEO. Um, but they still, there's I feel that there's a world between what they say and what they do. And if you manage to get a, to, to open an account, if you're making too many transactions, you're gonna get flagged. And they have no incentives to actually understand what you do. Um, because you just, we're, we're just such a tiny community. There's too much compliance cost involved. So, sorry, you guys rejected by Revolut? TransferWise, uh, eBan first, all of them. All of them. So it's hard. It's hard to find one, and um, and yeah, I recommend having several of them because you never know when you're gonna get stuck. Hopefully, we you will be able to open an account with us in in six or seven months. Hi, very good presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is, uh, how about the gas? So transaction fees, for example, you are sending a lot of salaries, for example, every month. So especially during the hype on Ethereum, you know, it was very expensive. So are you planning to solve this problem through some layer two solution, for example, on your platform? So the good thing right now, uh, Ethereum gas fees, so to be honest with you, we, we did prioritize a little bit the, the L2 uh, solution we were working on. So we we experimenting with the ZK Sync, uh, optimistic rollups. We did prioritize a little bit because we felt that our main use case today is to enable uh, payroll to enable basic basic payments and gas fees are way lower than they used to be, uh, thanks to you know Polygon, thanks to many other L2 solutions. Um, we we will have to build it anyway, uh, so probably using zk Relic, Z, zk sync, um, or potentially integrating with the other chains as well. That could be another option. Uh, now, now that everybody uh, you know everybody is launching chain, I mean they call it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, L2 solutions, or they are just separate channels with bridges. Um, we we will expand support to other chains to enable low low gas fees transactions as well. The one one of the solutions, though, if you're making a lot of transactions to the same counterparty, is to use tools like mass senders, because in that case, you're only paying gas fees for one transaction. Um, thank you first for this uh, ver very ver valuable talk. Um, my question is, uh, which country in Europe would you recommend to make the company? Be because I'm, for example, we are from Germany and trying to build a crypto company in, in Germany. It's, mm. it's, it's a hell. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing in there. It's hell. Yeah. Um, no, because you um, don't get the bank accounts, um, be because of taxation, if you make profit out of... Um, Cryptos, you you have to pay taxes on on on, mm. on that, and at the end you're just getting losses by it, and it's very complicated. And then um, the the tax organizations are not uh, aligned to it, and that's a problem. As an example, what what's your what's your what's your business? What, what do I, you do? IT consultancy. Consultancy. Yes. IT. So. I, I mean, I'm, I might be biased, but I feel that. I, I, I first incorporated in France, um, so usually we're not necessarily the main, uh, the best, uh, um, the best country to incorporate your startup. Uh, 
But the good thing with crypto is that there is now a regulatory framework, right? Um, you, you don't get taxed when you do crypto to crypto trading, uh, just like in the US. So, um, I mean, I mean, unless you go to Switzerland, Switzerland is amazing, but you have to have a local representation there. So you have to have an office and people on the ground. So unless you, unless you can afford this, um, I'll, I'll recommend go to France or UK is, is okay too, but I'm less familiar, so maybe you can uh, potentially tell us more about this. Uh, and the US, the US is quite cool actually. Anyone else? No? Thank you guys, thanks for okay. being here. Thank you so much.